Welcome to our electron line. If we have second order differential equations that do not have constant coefficients, the challenge is to solve the homogeneous portion of the equation. And there are many different methods to do that, depending upon what that equation looks like. So here we have the general format of a second order differential equation that in this case is homogeneous, and we'll see then later how to find the particular part of the solution when it's not homogeneous, but right now we're simply going to concentrate on solving the left side of the equation, the homogeneous part of the equation, and you'll see that depending upon what that structure looks like, what this equation looks like, what these functions of t look like in front of y prime and y, we'll employ a different technique to solve that, and there's many different techniques to do so. So we have method one, called the missing y term. If the y term is missing, then it's not that difficult to solve for the homogeneous part of the equation. We'll show you how to do that. Matter of fact, I think we already showed you at least one example of that, but we'll get into it a little bit more. Then there's method two called the Euler equation. Now that's if we have an equation in this general format, t squared times y double prime plus at times y prime plus by, and then we set into the standard format by dividing both sides by t squared, the equation will look like this. If the equation looks like this, we'll use what we call the Euler equation method to solve that differential equation. Method three is what we call reduction of order. Sometimes we already know one of the two solutions, and if one of the solutions is known, we simply have to then try to find the second solution, and there's a special technique to do so. That's called reduction of order. The fourth method is called the power series method, and there's a lot of different ways in which this is used. But the most common example of that is if we have the equation in this format, we have y double prime plus some function of t divided by t times y prime plus another function of t divided by t squared times y equals zero. If we can put the equation in this format, then the solution to the equation will be an infinite series, or I should say an infinite sum, not an infinite series, but an infinite sum, which can be compacted to be written like that. The fifth method is what we call the Legendre's equation. Now that looks a little bit different. Here we have the general format of one minus t squared times y prime minus two t times y, prime, did I say double prime? I meant double prime here, and here y prime, plus n times n plus 1 times y equals 0. If you find something in that format, we could then write into the standard format like this, and realizing that 1 over 1 minus t squared can be expressed in an infinite sum like this, we could then also find the solution using an infinite sum. And finally, we're going to look at what we call Bessel's differential equation, which is an equation that looks in this form, t squared times y double prime plus t times y prime. Now that looks a lot like what we had over here, except we don't have a constant in front. But then we have this here, t squared minus f squared times y, where f squared is a function of t. And then realizing that when we put into the standard form, we have p of t is going to be t divided by t squared in standard form, Realizing that since we have a t in the denominator, it's not analytic at t equals zero. We'll explain what that means when we get to those videos. Again, we'll have an infinite sum as the solution, but notice that t will be raised to r plus m. And the solution here will come by finding what that r is equal to. And there's, of course, different scenarios, different cases that we have to look at. So here is just a start of the various ways in which we can solve second-order differential equations when the coefficients are not constant. Why all the different techniques? Because in each case, when the equation looks a little bit different, we have to employ a different technique. So it helps to recognize what the initial equation looks like and then knowing what technique to use to solve each of the equations. And here we're simply talking about only solving the homogeneous part of the equation. Then we'll have to later on also learn how to solve the particular part of the equation. However, we already know some methods for that, but we'll have to go over that again with some good examples when the coefficients are not constant. And so if you're interested in knowing how to do that, stay tuned. We'll have some more videos for you explaining how to do each of those methods. And that's how it's done.